Right, welcome back. I can happily say that the uh, Millennium Falcon is all finished. I've done the last bit of weathering, a um, bit of detailing, a bit of construction, and I'm really well chuffed on how she's turned out. So, here's the final reveal. Right, so there's the Falcon. In all its glory. On the base, I don't know what I'm going to do with the base yet. I've got a few ideas, but I just wanted to mainly get the Falcon done. So, when I left you, I'm just about to start doing the top weathering. So, I don't know how well this is showing up, but you can see where I've streaked it. You've got the battle damage there. It's a bit more better on this side here. Getting some reference photos off the internet to try and do the weathering I didn't want to go too heavy but I didn't want to go too subtle I just wanted to go in between now with the um, recessed areas um, what I did is I got Tammy a smoke and painted on that by hand but I put a drop of water on the outer edges and then I put the Tammy a smoke on and then just dip my brush back in the water and just thinned it out a bit as I was applying it um, when it's dried, if you think you've put it on too thick, just use the LP35 Insignia White and just dab it on. I've also done the um, interiors, the recessed areas inside with the Tamiya smoke mixed in with water. I didn't use the weathering pencils on those. Um, round the mandibles, um, recessed areas, again, put some water on, then get a bit of Tamiya smoke and then water it down again a bit more. And then right inside the recessed areas as well. So those are looking really nice. You've got this bit of battle damage in there. And I just filled that in with the um, Tamiya Black. Along with that one. Tamiya Black. The weathering pencil black. And then just streaked it. I let it dry first and then I moistened the brush a bit. Then streaked it. Because there was enough in there to do my streaking as well. Another bit of recessed area there, again with a tummy of smoke. Um, I soldered the two wires together for the um, gunner turret areas with my 9 volt battery, the square battery. And you can see it's a hell of a lot better there. I've just uh, moved my gunner turret so you can get a better view. So that's that. A bit more weathering on that side as well a bit more streaking so turning the falcon round on the back plate the um, exhaust fumes where they go into soot I just use my um, weathering pencil in the smoke and I just moisten my brush and then wipe wipe the brush on the edge of my pencil for the weathering pencil and then applied it by brush and then a bit of water just to thin it out a bit and a little bit on the um, grills, the photo etch. Now a little tip for you with the photo etch. Remember when I said there was a little bit of a gap about that big? I couldn't get the, the, the black plate right close to the photo etch and I could pop them out. Well I found that um, the, there's tiny, tiny little pins. One, two, three, four, five. There's tiny, tiny little pins. Cut them off. Once you cut them off and sanded them, you'll be able to push that black plate right, virtually right up to the photo etch, so it's a bit more secure. And then just a bit more with the browns as well, weathering wise. Um, it's not looking too bad with the uh, engine soot, as it were. Right, so you can probably see that the. Uh, battery packs all connected now so if I just pop it off there in the corner get your thumb there pop it off and then again pop it off and then grab it and then pull it out because that little tab there goes in that little hole there and then you've got turning it over you've got that tab there and that tab there, that locks into that hole there and that hole there. You need to push it down on the corner. Right, so 
when I told you I'd cut the pins off on the inside here of the plate, you still need to leave those alone because they still need to, but you can push that right up. Right, so taking that away. Right, there's my 9 volt battery. There's my uh, battery pack. So you plug all the wires in and you put it in face down and then you just shove it in there basically. I think it's actually supposed to go in that hole there, but with the jungle of wires I just pushed it down a bit upside down and that suffices. And there's my 9 volt battery there and that powers the uh, two gunner turret areas and just slip that in there. Right, so then you get your tab and push that in. Doing this one handed. So that goes right in there and then you push down there and then you push down there and that locks into place. So the exhausts are looking really, really nice. And turning the camera back round. Turning the camera back round. Turn the Falcon back round. Oh yes, I forgot about this. The sides, again, with your watered down Tamiya smoke, just jab it in. All the way round. And on there as well. And it gives it a nice, nice, subtle weathering effect. That Tamiya smoke is really, really good stuff. Now, with the light on the cockpit, I don't think the camera's going to pick it up really that well, to be honest, because I've got the glare. I have to turn that off. Right, there we go. So you can see the light coming through those two little prism-like shapes at the back of the cockpit. Um, it doesn't really light the cockpit that well. You can, you can see them, it's perfectly fine. But I probably probably should have put an LED in there. But the only trouble is when you run the wire through um, the outer like tub, you've got that black tub through, if you remember. You need to put this neck on top of that. And I don't think there's going to be much space for some wires. So what you might have to do is might use some extra thin wires. Right, so I'm going to pause this a sec and turn it over. Right, resting it on my towel. Um, I didn't actually do any of the weathering on my last video, so what I did is before I started at the top, I put the Tamiya smoke round the um, recessed areas. It's a bit darker on this side, to be honest. You've got that as well, and then you've got the mandibles with the Tamiya smoke watered down um, mixture. You got so you've got the light there for the one landing foot. Um, You've got the plate there and the plate there. I've got to take those off. But that's how that looks as well. Looking really, really nice of the weathering. I mean, I pretty much showed you this before, but I'll just give you another shot. Again, with the wash as well in the panel lines, I wanted to bring those out a bit. Um, with the feet. Now, as you know, I'd run out of the um, Insignia White by Tamiya. So what I did is I'd done my old um, greyish white blending in effect. So I sprayed these in the grey primer, masked off all this because I wanted that into a bit of the bare plastic to go in there. Um, so I just sprayed the grey primer on and then lightly dusted on with a white to get it to blend in. And then just went to town with it with the weathering pencils. On the underneath, I just got the sandpaper and went back to the primer, just for those little feet plates, and then just did the uh, black and brown weathering pencils. So that's that. Now I'm gonna pause this a sec again so I can get them plates out. Right, so fetching the little plates out, you can see that the LEDs are still working on the back feet as well. Now with the VAT feet, you've got those two little square mounting, raised mounting tabs, and those plug into there. Um, the short one goes in the back and the long one goes in the front, so you just plonk those in there like that. Very easy to put in. Um, it's only loose at the moment, but once it's uh, on its feet, it will push those right in. 
So again, small to big, small to small, big to big. Just push that down a little. That's better. And then you've got that one as well. So you've got the little hole cut out for the light. Now with this one, you've got uh, two little channels there, and those log on, to, those click onto those there. So it's a bit more difficult doing this one handed. Right, that's that one. Right, one thing I forgot to do was the uh, the landing ramp. So I'm gonna pause this again. Right, so there's my landing ramp. There's the little LED there. I didn't feel the need to weather my landing ramp because uh, the the um, insignia white already done it for me. So again, you've got like the two holes there with the two tabs and you just, uh... yeah, that's right. So I'll just put them in there like that. And that just sits in there like that. And that will light up the landing ramp. I'll demonstrate in that in the moment. And if I just move the gunner turret, you can see the other, that it's all lighted up. You can just about make out the other figure in there. That's what I like about these gunner turrets. You can actually move them. So that's that sorted. Right, so I'm going to pause this again and get it back on its feet. Right, so on my turntable, I've had to put the board down because... Uh, I don't think the turret table is quite big enough to be honest. So there's the uh, landing ramp with the light, lighting up very very nicely indeed. Better than I expected to be in this, but let's just uh, put the flash on. So you can make out a bit more colour of the landing ramp. But the light is doing it really really nice. Like I said, on the boarding ramp, I wish they'd have put a perspective decal in there. So it gives you like, you know, like on the um, the Battlestar Galactica from Mobius, where they give you that little decal. So it makes you, can, looks like you can see into the um, landing bay area for the Vipers and the shuttles. But that's the uh, boarding ramp area. Just turning the flashback off. Yeah, it's coming out really nice. That is. The light is really nice, actually. I like that. Right. So, a bit more of the uh, side weathering with the Tamiya smoke. Just applied with a brush, dabbed it down. That's come out really, really nice, that is. Oh, that's nice. I like that. See that there? With the uh, landing feet lamp. That's really nice, that is. I like that. That's not bad at all. Um, I didn't really do much weathering on the inside in here because I couldn't get my brush in there But to be honest, it doesn't really matter because you can't really see it that much Done a bit of side weathering with this Tamiya smoke water mixture there as well Now, one thing I forgot to tell you about was the radar dish And um, with the radar dish, again, I'd run out of the paint So I painted that at the same time as I painted the feet Just primed it and then um, with the grey primer and then lightly dusted the white on. Took me two coats um, with about an hour's drying time in between. It doesn't exactly 100% match the hull. But I was quite chuffed how it, how, it's, um, how, it, how it came out. Now it did come out a bit whiter than I wanted to. So what I did is I got the, um, the weathering pencil. The black wet, um, the smoke weathering pencil, and then just uh, and that made it a bit more grey as well. Brought it down a, a couple of shades from like the greyish white. So it's not far off, but it's not perfect. There's a couple of tiny decals on there, little orange, some kind of I don't know what they are because I could barely see them to be honest, even with my specs on. Um, on the back there, again with the white. Um, sprayed on top of the grey and then the weathering pencils to bring out bring it down um, I didn't use the two decals the one there and the one there. I painted that on with the um, Tamiya grey three Tamiya grey revel grey three six one five seven um, Under here if I move that up slightly there is a decal on here somewhere There it is There's a decal just there a really long decal 
and then there was a couple of edition decals as well. I think there was a text one there. There's your main decal. And then there was one right at the side, um, just here. But it was a really long decal for the one in the middle. And again, this still moves up and down. You can twirl it as well. Because like I said, you, I mean, I could just pull it out. It just pulls out. And you can just pop that back in there. So if you do need to turn it upside down, at least you can remove that. But there it is, all finished. I'm really well chuffed with this. And I'm hoping my friend as well, I know you're going to be watching. Um, I think my friend's up to part 10 on the videos. So he's probably going to be binge watching them because I did speak to him about it yesterday. And he did say he was going to be binge watching. Oh, that one's that's just popped out a bit, but you can just pop, push that down. It will slot into place. It just needs a bit of gentle persuasion to slot back down, but I assure you it does go in fully. I don't know why that's just popped out. But I'm really loving this. I'm really, I'm really liking the fact that my friend gave me the opportunity to do this because never did I ever think I was ever going to do this. So just giving it one last twirl. I said the, the lights through there, the engines, with that little bit of a uh, Tamiya clear blue, just really transforms those engines. Because if you didn't put the Tamiya blue on, I think it'd be just white. And then again with the boarding ramp. With the decal on the front cockpit, I didn't feel the need to weather it. It's all right the way it is. And there it is, those are my spare bits for the panels and the, um, I don't know where the front one's actually, where's that front one gone? It's on the shelf up here somewhere. So yeah, there it is, all done. I better turn that flash off so I don't blind myself. Right, um, I want to thank you for sticking with me for these almost four months that I've been working on the Falcon. I'll put the stills on at the end of this video and I'm, I'm going to be back fairly soon. I'm going to take a, probably about a month off now from modelling because I've got other stuff to do. And I'll see you fairly soon in my next project. So thank you very much for watching.